All right. My name's Ashlyn Chapman. I'm a software engineer in the IT department at Cisco. And today we're going to talk about how Cisco IT enables hybrid cloud infrastructure with Argo workflows. We're going to talk about the key players in each of the problems they face, and then we're going to get into the solution and how Argo workflow works best for us. So there's three main classifications of teams we have to serve. That's the application developers, the IT providers, and then my team, the platform engineers. First up, we've got the application developers. They're software engineers who either generate revenue or run the business. So I like to think my work is really important because I help app dynamics engineers make our company money and the finance engineers send that money to our bank account every two weeks. Um, but developers, they need infrastructure resources to deploy their apps. And they expect fast results with a self-serve experience. But right now, that experience is confusing and costly. We've got 20 different tools they can use to provision and manage their infrastructure. And in the case of public clouds, sometimes they'll make their own accounts unaffiliated with Cisco, and they'll pay market rates instead of our lowered bulk costs. We've got the IT providers. These are groups of admins, SREs, software engineers that provide infrastructure resources and services. They do managed AWS, Kubernetes clusters as a service, Windows VMs. For them, it's really challenging to provide um, operation and support at scale, especially when developers try to configure their resources on their own. Like we've got 40,000 VMs, the Linux team can't go in and help every single VM when there's an issue. Additionally, security vulnerabilities always take number one priority, and we want to make sure that our IT providers have um, a clear way to deal with other support issues after the security ones are dealt with. Finally, we've got my team, the platform engineering team. We try to solve IT problems with software. Frankly, we're an expensive team for IT because we've built tools with similar capabilities, and then we have to continue to pay for the infrastructure and support those services. Um, additionally, our biggest issue with some of our previous IT tools is that the support responsibilities are shared with the IT providers, and it's unclear. And this causes large delays in uh, resolving problems, and app developers are stuck waiting for their infrastructure. So this is the Venn diagram of the shared responsibilities where it's not clear who needs to be doing what. Now we're going to talk about our solution and why Argo Workflows is the linchpin to our success. What we're building is called the Control Plane Platform. In this model, each IT provider will use a control plane to manage their infrastructure resources. This could be the out-of-the-box vendor solution, think of VMware, or they can use our cookie cutter version that we're building for them. And this makes it so the developers have a clear tool to go to when they need to get resources, and also they know exactly what team can help support that resource when they have an issue. We like this model as well because IT providers don't have to worry about developer experience. They can just focus on infrastructure. All they have to do is build out the infrastructure automation. And from here on out, we're doing all new automations in Argo workflows. The thing about Argo workflows that's really nice is that it supports a lot of the skill sets that IT providers already have. They might not all know Python, but they probably know shell script. And additionally, we can onboard existing automations like Ansible jobs uh, via the API. Uh, finally, the platform will run the automations in Argo workflow. We like this. Now we've got all of our infrastructure documented with Terraform and all of our automations documented with Argo workflow. This is uh, a quick pick of the control plane that we're building out. So we've got React front end, Django back end, so app developers can use the UI and the IT providers can use the Django admin panel. This is the architecture for our solution. On the left, we've got the control plane instance. This is where application developers can go and see their resources uh, and then what actions they can perform on those resources. So for a VM, they could see that they can reboot the VM, they can grow the file system, add CPU, whatever they need. Once they submit an action, the control plane generates a request. The creation of this request will trigger the infrastructure automations in Argo workflow. The first one is the parent workflow, and this is what the platform team is building and maintains. And this is the integration between the control plane instance and the infrastructure automations. So the IT provider teams can focus on their infrastructure and not integrating. Um, the parent workflow we'll call the provider automation workflow, and this will make the actual changes to the infrastructure resources. This might actually allocate the additional CPU to the VM. And then they've got to deal with the, uh, the operational administrative tasks that deal with change requests. They got to bill the user's tenant for the additional resources. They need to update the change request and the IT service management tool. All of that will happen um, as part of the IT provider's infrastructure automations. 
What we specifically love about Argo workflows is the workflow of, work, the workflow of workflows pattern. This lets you natively create uh, children workflows from one parent workflow. So on the left, we have the parent workflow, which is what the platform team creates. This is a cluster level template. So every IT provider team has access to it. And then it'll get the information from the control plane and trigger the corresponding provider automation workflow. Each of the provider automation workflows are namespace templates. Okay, and the entire IT provider workflows will run in their individual namespaces. So this is important because that means any failure that happens in a namespace is the IT provider's responsibility unless it's in the parent workflow. This is how we are <laughs> delineating the responsibilities when there are failures in the automations. Additionally, something that we found really helpful with Argo workflows as opposed to other tools is that when there's a failure or an issue with a child automation, it'll propagate back up to the parent and we can report back to the control plane that there's a failure. We don't want like an app developer to request infrastructure and that gets stuck in pending. And then they come to us and tell us there's a problem before we ever see that in the control plane. So overall, we like Argo workflows for all the basic reasons. It's cloud agnostic. We love that it's not proprietary. And since it's based on Kubernetes, there's a lot of documentation, whether that's the Kubernetes documentation for setting it up or examples in containers for running different runtimes, whether that's a containerized CLI, a shell script, an Ansible job via the API. Um, and for all those reasons, that's really given us a great developer experience. Additionally, um, we talked about the flexibility of Argo workflows. This um, it really lets us utilize both the platform engineering team skill sets as well as each individual IT provider team skills. And it lets us not repeat work we've done from some of our previous tools since we're able to onboard existing automations. And then finally, Argo Workflow is giving us clarity when we're troubleshooting. Because each container, each step runs as an independent container, we know that that's where the failure is and it didn't happen earlier in the automation. And additionally, because of their separated namespaces, we're able to keep our environments clean with minimal operational overhead. All of the IT providers use the same Kubernetes clusters, but they each get their own environment to do their automations. So that's how we're turning this Venn diagram of shared support responsibilities into separate circles where developers know exactly what tool to go to and what team to talk to. So they have a great experience when things go right and when things go wrong. Thank you, my name's Ashlyn. You can leave feedback with the QR code on the left or connect with me on LinkedIn with the QR code on the right.